Do you feel like you should be hitting more shots? You should be getting more kills? Do you constantly feel like you need to change a setting because something doesn't quite feel right? Well, I got you. With over 14 years of sniping experience, I've learned so many tips over the years that a lot of you may not know. In this video, I'll be going over the best tips and strategies on how to snipe on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We're going to start with my sniping tips and then move into my controller settings, my graphic settings, and all the secret settings that you may have missed on Modern Warfare 3. For this first part here, I want to talk about the timing and pre-aiming. I feel like it is the most important part if you are a new sniper and you're learning how to snipe. Just getting that muscle memory down of pressing the left trigger and the right trigger as soon as your scope perfectly centers on the enemy. Timing is literally one of the most underrated tips for sniping. It's different for every weapon you use, but fully understanding the time it takes to ADS, fire rate of the sniper you're using, moving around with the gun you're using, it's all super important. This helps immensely because it will allow you to use the sniper to its maximum potential. For example, if you're using a longbow and you don't have the timing down because it's more of a fast sniper, you're not going to be able to pop off as much as somebody else who has the timing down so if you're able to pop quickly from one person to another because you understand the fire rate of that weapon then you're going to shine much more than somebody who is unaware of the timing moving on into centering you guys know how much i've been preaching this man this is one of the most important tips that i can give you guys for quick scoping it is super important especially since the snipers in this game don't have much aim assist uh, compared to the previous call of duties now i've been preaching this since 2017 centering is the most efficient way to quick scope so it is putting the center of your crosshair on the enemy before you scope in so not aiming in until that center dot or the crosshair is directly on the enemy the reason this is the best way to quickscope is because it doesn't rely on aim assist and it strengthens the hell out of your aim. The best way to practice this is again going into bots, putting them on recruit, and staring at the center of your screen. It may sound funny, but when I'm quickscoping, I literally force myself to not aim in until the enemy is directly in the center of my screen. Again, it's situational, so sometimes you can get away with drag scoping, but for the most part, centering is super important and is what I do mainly. Crosshair placement, you may have heard this term for game like Valorant or Counter-Strike, but it applies just as well for sniping on COD. This ties into map knowledge, which we'll get into a little bit more later, but putting the crosshair where you know the enemy is going to be. So from a casual's perspective in a kill cam, this may make them think you're cheating because you're already looking where they're going to be, but it basically just comes down to knowledge. What they don't realize is predictability. So knowing how the enemy plays, knowing where they're going to run around a corner, are they going to slide, are they going to jump, it all comes into play. So you got to know the enemies you're playing against. It's super important because it helps you get the jump on the enemy even if they have like a submachine gun or a shotgun where they would normally win the gunfight, but since you're pre-aiming around the corner where you know they're going to be, you're going to have that edge on them. Moving into map knowledge and spawn knowledge, this is a super important little category right here, and it's simple. Knowing the map will allow you to be a better sniper and player overall. This does help because we're playing the OG Modern Warfare 2 maps. Even though they do play very differently, kind of have that familiarity of the maps because we've played them for a decade. Now, if you haven't played these maps back in the day, this is going to be a little bit different for you. But the more you know the map, the more you know the spawns, the better of a player you will be and the more kills you will get in a game. Another super important tip that I feel like goes over the head of a lot of people when it comes to sniping, this obviously helps with everything as well, even if you're not just sniping, but enemy prioritizing. This chapter is super important if you feel like you can't get more than one or two kills when you see a group of people. So a lot of times when you're playing, you find yourself turning a corner and you see more than one person, you'll shoot one of them and instantly die. Or maybe you don't even get that first kill. This is because of who you're choosing to shoot first. It's very situational, but in that short period of time, you need to figure out which enemy is likely to kill you first. So you're going to go from most likely to kill you to less likely. So starting off with the controller settings, as you guys are aware, I do play on controller. I'm going to put a video up on the screen right now of my PlayStation 5 controller. The only modifications I have to this PS5 controller are just the digital triggers. I just love using the default controller. That's what I've been using since 2007, so I'm sticking to that. Um, and I also play default, so as I scroll down, you guys are going to see that I pretty much play on default everything. I got um, no tactical, no flipped, no nothing, just everything default. And uh, by the way, shout out to my vibration gang. You know the vibration needs to be on. We're a dying breed, but hey, we're still here. Obviously, you're going to have the trigger effects on off. And then, which is one of the most important parts, the dead zone. If you aren't aware, the dead zone is one of the most important settings for a controller. If you feel a little bit blocky, if you feel a little bit heavy, it's probably because your left stick min 
and your right stick min are pretty high. I like to keep mine on 10. I think that's a perfect uh, little area for me. But if you have stick drift, you're going to want your right stick min and left stick min to be higher. If you don't have stick drift, you want this to be lower. So you don't want to go too low so it's like insanely sensitive. But I feel like 10 is a perfect middle ground for me. And uh, you can build off that as well. When it comes to the aiming, I play on 16, 14 sensitivity. I feel like that is the best for me. Uh, to put this in perspective, on the old Call of Duties, whenever it went up to 10, uh, this was around 8. So this might be a little bit faster than 8, but I feel like it is perfect. I also heard a rumor way back in the day that if you put your vertical sensitivity too less than your horizontal, it feels like old CODs. That might be placebo, but I've been using that ever since they added the horizontal and vertical, and I feel like it, it plays great. ADS sensitivity multiplier is the same sensitivity multiplier. I didn't change any of this. Vertical aim axis, it's all standard. Uh, tactical sensitivity, I don't even know what this is. I, it's all standard. But aim response curve type, this is another really important setting uh, that you guys may have skipped over. But I play on dynamic. Dynamic is super nice. All I know is, is when I put dynamic on, my sensitivity feels more responsive when I spin left, when I spin right. It just feels more responsive. So I've been rocking dynamic ever since they've added that option. ADS sensitivity, all this. This is all default. Target aim assist, you got to have on. Aim assist type default. I'm not rocking precision. No focusing. No black ops this year. On uh, the Treyarch games, I like to go precision. But on these Modern Warfare games, I just keep it default. It feels good for me. Uh, third person ADS, that's all assist, this is all default, and then you got the gameplay. I used to not play on automatic tax sprint, but recently I switched to it. It's kind of a shame, I'm not really a fan of tax sprint, but you know, it's the fastest way to get around the map, and especially since they just recently buffed the movement, um, tax sprint, I just, I just keep it on always, so... You're going to want to put the slide slash dive behavior to slide only. This is another really, really important setting. This setting really makes your movement feel like Modern Warfare 2019. This is a great setting. If you guys haven't rocked this, I highly recommend you do so. Then all, all these uh, settings are all default as well. You got the sprinting door dash, like all this stuff. It's, it's all default. I haven't really changed any of this. I'll just keep scrolling down. You guys can copy it. I don't know. This is all Warzone stuff as well. I don't know if any of you guys are going to change any of this, but this is all that I'm rocking right here for the final settings for my controller. Moving on to graphics, I play on full screen exclusive. Uh, I got the 240 hertz refresh rate. I also play on 1080p. I've heard 1440p is the moves, by the way. If any of you guys have a 1440p monitor, make sure to comment down below whether or not you guys think it's worth it because I've heard some great things about it. But all this, I just have this on default pretty much. Custom frame limit, I have it on 290. Uh, menu to 30 and 30 for streaming when I tab out. I don't want it to be all crazy and stuff. So moving on to the quality section. I get really good frames off stream. I'm, I'm at around 250, uh, 260 on stream. I get around 200. So you guys can just copy this right now. I don't have any specifics. I'm not, you know, this is not like a best settings for my high FPS and stuff like that. I've just copied um, a, a trusted source paradox they usually have great settings, so I'll just scroll down on here, and you guys can copy it. Everything on normal, everything on low. Uh, you don't really need the crazy max graphics uh, for, you know, sniping and what I do. So, when you go on to the view category right here, 110 FOV. I feel like that's a perfect middle ground between having a super high FOV and having, like, that default OG COD FOV. Uh, you got affected field of view, third person, 80. This is all default motion blur and weapon motion blur. Need that off. Uh, if you guys are still playing with motion blur in 2023, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Film grain all the way at zero. First person camera movement and third person. This is all at least movement. That's actually pretty important too. It's camera shake. Who wants that? Then you got spectator camera. This is all default as well. Moving on to the interface category. There's some great secret settings in the interface category that you guys should copy down. One of the most important ones is the color customization tab. Now, this is super, super important for making your game look pretty vibrant um, some of the maps look very washed and so if you go down to the color filter settings you go to color filter 2 and then you put the target on both I have my intensity on 80 but the difference between having this on default is kind of crazy the maps look great with this it's a lot more vibrant you can see enemies a lot easier it's super super nice then you got the hud bounce this is all default mini map shape is on square rotation on this is another super important setting right here for snipers exclusively this is pretty important crosshairs are off so if you hit show more i don't like to have the crosshairs on in this game because for some reason they're bouncy they jump all over the place they're kind of distracting so i turn them off but the center dot is on. Listen, the center dot is one of the best additions to the newer Call of Duties, hands down, especially for sniping. 
You guys know how important centering your shot is, and having that center dot makes it much easier to focus and put that dot on the enemy and just pop shot left and right. It's super, super nice. I highly recommend you guys have it. I have mine on default. If you have it on largest, it looks like a fat freaking clite in your screen, so I'm not really uh, I'm not really a fan of that. So I keep mine on default. It looks great. All this hit marker visuals, this is pretty much all on default. Telemetry, this is like showing your FPS and stuff. I used to have my FPS and all that on. I recently just took it off last night. That's personal preference for you guys as well though and then everything else is all default down here as well over to my audio settings i use the home theater audio mix uh with the master volume at 20 this is all default voice chat on proximity chat all that this is gonna be again i'll just scroll down so you guys can copy it if you want but this is gonna be very personal preference for you all and then all this is all default as well i've been thinking about changing the hit marker sound effects to classic i may update that and i'll let you guys know how that is but for now i just have none i actually love the kill sound effect i think it's super satisfying especially the headshots uh sound i feel like the headshot sound is one of the more satisfying sounds we've had in the more recent CODs. I like to wait a week until I go and do these settings videos because there's a lot of secret settings that you don't really realize upon the first two games of playing. So once I wait about a week, I fine tune all these settings and uh, they're perfect and good to go. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you found something useful to better your sniping game on Call of Duty. And uh, if you guys enjoyed, if something helped, make sure to drop a like. It helps out more than you think. And I'll see you on the stream. If not, I'll see you in the next upload. Deuces. How in the fuck are you about to say the way that we do it? It's not the way. No, don't you swear that you're not in the way. Nothing you do could be in my day.